Hey, my loves, welcome to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment because I love to bump gums with you. Hope you enjoy. Hello, gorgeous. Welcome back to the bonus episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Um, If you listen to Wednesday's episode, you guys know that... Today, I am addressing any questions, I guess the top questions that you guys have had for me throughout the course of season 11. Um, I know that many of you have said that I surround myself with yes people. Um, That is not true. I have a lot of people in my circle who are tremendous support systems But when I look back on my life, especially starting season four to where I am now, a lot has happened in my world. Um, I've gotten sober. I've gone through a really tough breakup. I've handled myself in a very eloquent way, a very eloquent way. And then I've burned that to the ground a many of time. Um... You don't go through the types of changes like I've gone through in my life, the evolution that I've gone through in my life, what we call, I guess, in Hollywood or TV biz, um, a character arc. You don't go through the one that I've had being surrounded by yes people. You just don't. Um, I'm proud of where I am. I am still human and make uh, many mistakes. (laughs) Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm not too proud to admit that there are times where I go, damn, I've had a really humbling moment just now. They happen to me all the time. Um, And it's never going to change that I will always continue being my biggest fan because if I don't continue to practice self-love and self-support, Um, I can go into a dark place. So I do have many people around me who support me, but they check me a lot. Um, And I'm grateful for that. Today, because I've been told I'm surrounded by yes people, I have pulled producer John, (laughs) who you guys know from the regular episodes. Um, He's going to ask me the questions. Again, I've been off social media Um, I had him (laughs) comb through (laughs) all of the top questions. He wrote them down. Um, unless it's a Rams game, he's not tuning in. So he became aware of Lala (laughs) Kent when my home podcast network said, Hey, you'll be producing a show called give them Lala. And he's like, the Rams, what? (laughs) So here's producer John. He does not know much about anything but sports. Um, and the podcast that we do together. Um, but as far as VPR, he's an outsider. Welcome, John. I have a beanie on, so none of you guys are going to get blinded by this bald head. So <laughs> We love it. Um, he's not a yes man. He's just going to simply ask the top questions that y'all have asked throughout season 11. I will answer uh, in my truth, and we'll move on. Are you upset VPR is paused? Um. No, I'm quite the opposite. I feel like I need a break. I feel like the rest of my cast needs a break. Um, As much as I love filming the show, it can become very volatile. We are, I'm hypersensitive and emotional, especially being pregnant. Um, To be honest, when I heard we were paused, it was like an elephant lifted off of my chest because it was like I get to create... Um, a very peaceful environment for this new baby that I'm bringing into the world. Um, And I just feel like it's meant to be. Are you trying to get on the valley? You bought a house there. Um, I have not had any conversations about entering the valley. I have had no thought about going on the valley. Uh, I bought a house in the valley because I could not afford a home that was large enough for my family with a yard in the flats of Beverly Hills. When you're ready to be a homeowner and you make what me or my friends make, you move to the valley. That's just what you do. Um, It was for no 
there was there was no there was nothing behind it except this is what we can afford and it's a beautiful space for my family. We're suburban people now, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to the valley. Thank you. <laughs> um, next question: Did you really pitch your own spinoff? I have never pitched a spinoff um, about my life. No. Did you get pregnant for a storyline? Is that really a question? That is a question. <laughs> oh <laughs> I my. got it right here. Oh my. Um, the thing about like I don't I don't even know how to answer this because it's such an absurd thing to say. <laughs> Someone to say like a storyline. This show we filmed two months out of the year. It it would be crazy of me to go and prep my body and get a donor and and choose single motherhood for the next 18, but really probably 21, 22, 25, 30, who the fuck knows, forever to have one season of a storyline. It just wouldn't make much sense. No, I love being a mom more than anything. I wanted to give my daughter a sibling. I knew that I wanted them close in age, and I feel so grateful that I was able to bring a baby into the world and not have a partner. It's like the best of both worlds. That is so wild to me that that's what people are saying. But it, it, it also doesn't, it tracks because there's many people on Bravo, um, Mauricio and Kyle, for example, they're staging their breakup for a storyline. They're they're changing the dynamic of their family in 27 years of marriage for a storyline. It's absolutely absurd. No, I am not bringing a child into the world, um, stretching my body in all different ways for a storyline. <laughs> wow. My mom loves the song I made for her on Songfinch. We gave it to her for Mother's Day because what exactly do you give the mama who has everything? Two years ago You left your home and dropped everything And you guys, she actually cried the first time she listened. So of course, that made me sob like a baby too. I got to choose the genre, which of course I chose country because that's her favorite. I got to personalize it so she knows just how much we all love her and how much she means to us. Song Finch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and it lasts forever. This is the perfect gift for Father's Day too. Even graduation, you can express your feelings in a song which will last forever. So start your song now to lock in one of Song Finch's top artists. For a limited time, Song Finch is letting our listeners upload their song for free, so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash Lala and start your song. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash Lala. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash Lala. Why do you feel your situation is so different than Ariana? Randall versus Tom, you yourself said they are both dangerous. I think I have a way of pulling things from my situation um, and applying them to things that make sense. And there were things about the cheating part of my situation with my ex that really triggered me when it came to Tom Sandoval. To say that Tom Sandoval and my ex are the same person, no. The way that they moved with creeping around on myself and Ariana, there were many things that were running parallel. It's difficult with my situation because I want to say 80% of the information I can't share. I just can't. I can't talk about it. If you guys want to Google, if you want to look things up, you're more than welcome to. There are things and reasons for my hard lines. There are reasons for me entering a custody battle, and I'm just going to leave it there. Are you jealous of Ariana because of the way people rallied for her and not for you? When my situation happened with my ex, I was so blindsided that just putting one foot in front of the other, simply waking up, was like a huge win 
for me. There are times that people have said, it must have been so difficult to go through what you were going through in public. And honestly, I didn't even realize I was going through it in public because it wasn't a breakup that I was going through. I was going into a battle um, for Ocean. And as time passed, um, and I did like the season nine reunion, which was very difficult. That was just a couple weeks after I had left um, my situation and was overwhelmed with information and knowing like I have to protect my seven month old. And then seeing people say like, um, you deserved this, this is your karma. Um, when you see things like that or hear things like that and you're looking at um, your baby. You develop like a different strength in that moment. It's wild. And I truly wouldn't wish that upon anybody. That time in my life was nothing short of torture, mental torture. When everything happened with Ariana, I was thrilled to see the audience rally around her. Do I wish I would have gotten that? Yeah, that would have been really, really nice. Um, but I didn't, and I'm okay. To ask if I'm jealous of Ariana, I find her to be extremely talented. I enjoyed watching her on Broadway. I truly believe that's where she deserves to be. She has proven herself tremendously in that space, and I stand by that. I also stand by the fact that she made filming a television show that we've been filming, some of them 11 years, me eight, extremely difficult this year. And I don't hold that against her because it was funky for all of us. We were all in uncharted waters. And I wasn't trying to be tough on her or make her move along in this process quicker but I knew we were filming a TV show. And just like Lisa Vanderpump had drilled me in her kitchen about my situation, did I enjoy that? Not at all. But I knew we were filming a show and I knew there were people out there in the audience who were gonna wonder these things. So with Ariana, when filming a television show, I asked her the things that I felt the audience may want to know. I in no way, shape, or form was trying to move her along in a process. I was not upset about the opportunities that she was getting. I was not mad that she got so much love. All of those things I was thrilled for her about. That is fact. It's also fact that filming a show with her this year was very, very hard. When it comes to travel, we all have that happy place we're always daydreaming about, whether it's a snow-capped mountain white sand beaches, or even a hometown visit. We all have that happy place. I know for myself, Easton, my mom, and I think Jessica too, that place just became Hawaii. We had such an amazing time there last fall that I think it's going to become a yearly trip. The beautiful beaches, the amazing food, and the fact that we completely chill. I'm not sure it gets any better than that. Whatever your happy place is, Priceline wants to get you there for a happy price. So you never have to miss a trip. So we rented our car in Hawaii through Priceline, and if I told you how much money we saved, you would not believe me. And did you know that when you bundle and save with Priceline, you can save up to $625 when you book your flights and hotels together. Just use Priceline and simply book your entire trip in one place. They truly have deals you can't find anywhere else. So download the Priceline app today to save up to 60% off select hotels and go to your happy price with Priceline. 
Why the hypocrisy when it comes to setting boundaries and respecting them? Example, you told Katie she didn't need to understand your life, but felt the need to understand Ariana's. I mean, I feel like that's a completely valid question. And Ariana was right in talking about her boundaries and saying that I didn't need to understand them. She's absolutely correct. You're allowed to set boundaries. It doesn't matter if I understand them. It's her life. I was simply asked, answering the question that Andy asked me and filming a TV show. And what exactly was your storyline this season, given that's all you talked about, while also saying Ariana brought nothing? Um, this season was extremely difficult. None of us were really able to have a storyline. We had to talk about this. It, was, it wasn't even a divide in the group. Like, this had demolished the group. I don't even know how to answer that question because so many times there were a lot of us who tried to push past talking about this and we simply couldn't. We couldn't. I mean, my, my life at this point in time, I was wanting to have a baby. I was going down a path of healing and sinking into what my reality is trying to let go of a lot of anger. And I think you saw at the beginning of the season, you know, where I lose it on Sandoval on the boat and I have to catch myself. You know, the the triggers for me run very, very deep. And if I don't start checking myself, and I've said this during the season, I'm going to end up in a really bad spot. So I don't know what people want me to say as far as what my storyline was. I showed up. I was willing to talk about anything and everything. Unfortunately, something that Tom Sandoval did destroyed the dynamic of the group. And unfortunately, and fortunately, we film a television show based on this group. There was no avoiding the conversation. I also would have liked to have moved on. Many of us wanted to move on. We tried to move the needle. It was hard. And I think that most people will not understand because they don't film a show. Their lives are not a show. When you have to combine the two, it really is fucking hard. Especially when something as traumatic as Scandaval happens in a group of people who have known each other a decade plus, been filming a show for 11 years, it was challenging. And the fact that we pulled it off, 18 episodes, pff, it's fucking wild to me. Your switch up from last season to this season is so confusing. Why would you go after Tom that way in the reunion and then ride so hard for him this season? Well, number one, I didn't ride for him so hard at all. I didn't show up to any of his events that he invited me to. I simply practiced compassion and acknowledged that a human being was a human being. And it's wild that I was actually lit on fire because of it this season. I did not jump on the Tom Sandoval train in any way, shape, or form. I acknowledged where I wanted to be in my life mentally and emotionally knowing that I was going to bring a child into the world and I wanted to be in a healthy space. I did that all for me. I think people are fixating on the Tom Sandoval of it. Take Tom out, insert someone else. It doesn't matter. This was my journey of healing. You're going to see me switch up a lot. That's how life works. I don't just pop up on your screen once a year for 15 weeks for 10 minutes max. I live a life every single day from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed and we start over and I experience different things during those days that shape me differently, make me look at life differently. When I have this baby, I'm going to look at life differently. I'm changing every single day. So while I understand the audience feels like the reunion happened and then the next day, that's what I was acting like, time had passed for me. I was not directly affected by Scandaval. Ariana was, and I felt for her. 
But my life had kept moving. And I am not someone who is friends with Tom Sandoval. I wasn't friends with him before this happened. I most certainly wouldn't be friends with him after this happened. And there were many times this season that he did invite me to his concerts, the hangouts. I didn't go to any of them. Because number one, it wouldn't make sense. I would never go if we weren't filming a show. And number two, even though I had questions for Ariana because that's just what we do in this environment that we've been doing for many years, I would always pick her. Still right now, us not seeing eye to eye, if you said pick Sandoval or Ariana, it's a no-brainer. Why did you really unfollow Katie and Ariana? Are you really not friends anymore or not on speaking terms? Um, again, I think that time does very crazy things. Um, when I think about time, I always, for some reason, go back to my dad. And it was like, one day I had a dad and in a matter of seconds, I didn't. And then I spiraled for a really long time. And time passed, and I have healed a lot. Something that you feel like you can never come back from, you suddenly come back from. That's what time does. So I'm not going to say that I would never be friends with them again. What I do know is this season was very tough for me. I felt like there were moments where I was being come, I was having people come at things that had nothing to do with the show. Right. It it got dark. Um, and there are things that I do sometimes to kind of bring me back to the light. And if one of those things happens to be unfollowing people who don't really make me feel good in the moment. I'm going to do that. And I think anybody and everybody should exercise doing whatever they need in the moment to feel good. You don't need to explain it to anybody unless you're doing this podcast. But like, I just wanted to feel good for a moment. I mean, this season, I was really being obliterated. It was very loud. And I'm used to having seasons where I'm not people's favorite. But the amount of hate that I was getting this season that had nothing to do with what was being shown on TV, it was a lot. And it really hurt my feelings. So if I needed to delete social media and unfriend a few people on Instagram to keep me where the light is, especially being pregnant, then that's what I'm going to do. Give Them Lala is sponsored by BetterHelp. This year, y'all, has flown by so quickly for me. I cannot believe that we're already almost halfway through the year. And when life goes by that fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate your wins and make adjustments for the rest of the year. Therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next six months. Therapy is so helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it's not just for those who have experienced major trauma. Therapy truly is for everyone. Easton's told you on the podcast how much it's helped him lately. And it makes my heart feel so warm. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your own schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Take a moment and visit betterhelp.com slash GTL today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash GTL. You claim to be a girl's girl. Why can't you support Ariana? I don't know when I've claimed to be a girl's girl. Do I prefer chicks over men? Hell yeah. But that doesn't mean that just because you're a girl, I blindly go into this and support you. I mean, for the most part, the people who are dragging me down to the depths of hell this season have all been women who don't know me. So do I prefer women over men? Yes. But to call me a girl's girl, I don't, I don't know that I've ever said that I'm a girl's girl. I think 
people labeled me a feminist after season six where I was like, pussy runs everything. And I, and I do believe that. But just because you're a woman does not mean that like I'm going to mess with you. Because like I said, it's women who really try to like bring me down pretty hardcore and they don't even know me. Were you a production puppet this season because you thought you were going to be rewarded? <laughs> I've been in this game a long time. Uh, you're not rewarded for things like that. There's a tier system in place. Um, I went in and I was authentic and things that didn't make sense to me. I asked questions. Um, if I felt it, I said it. Like I said, I will always have an opinion. It's what allows me to go in and make TV. And I'm happy the audience has an opinion because they are what makes it so that we can have a successful show. Without us both having an opinion, there's no show to be discussed. Um, I have never been anyone's puppet. The audience knows me. They know that I can change up quick. I ask questions if things don't make sense. I can go from slicing you with my words to being putty in your hand. It is what it is. This is the way I've been since I was a young kid. I went into this season like I go into every single season. This is how I feel. And people can try to change my mind. I'm open to, like I said, healthy debates, healthy conversations. I love not seeing eye to eye with people because it opens such fun, intense conversations. And I thrive off of environments like that, which is why I keep exposing myself to reality television because I enjoy it. Um, I've never been anyone's puppet and I certainly wasn't this season. Why did you feel the need to disclose a private conversation with Katie that happened off camera and bring your convo with Ariana where she apologized back up? Um, the first question, the conversation that I had with Katie was not private. These were things that she had said to production and the phone call that I was referring to, production was on the phone. She has been a part of this show since its conception. She knows the drill. It's always been the same. It's been the same in my eight years of doing it. That conversation that I brought up had to do with production. And she knows that. Um, the second, what was the second part of the question? And why did you bring your convo with Ariana where she apologized back up? Um, because there are things that I've apologized for many times where they bring a flashback up. I mean, the amount of times I've seen me getting my hair done, talking about the Range Rover I got after letting someone hit it the first night or me calling my ex a stand-up guy. I mean, I've seen this flashback more times than I ever care to see ever in my life. Um, and I wanted it to be a fair playing field. You may have apologized. I've apologized for things too, but I'm still held accountable. So it was my way of kind of saying like, can we get a flashback that Ariana has not always been this perfect girl's girl. She didn't acknowledge me at all when I had a party to celebrate the longevity of the Give Them Lala brand. She has openly stood there while Tom Sandoval, her then boyfriend, had belittled and degraded people like me, people like Stassi. And she also watched Charlie laugh at me when she was saying that I basically wasn't a good enough gold digger. Where are the flashbacks? Y'all do flashbacks to me in my not proud moments that I've apologized for all the time. Can we get the flashback? So I was happy to see that they did the flashback. And I was also happy to see that they put in her apology. That was it. It was that simple. We're all going to get flashbacks. None of us are going to forget our past. Let's have it a level playing field. So I have two game changers to share with you when it comes to upping your glam game. I am totally obsessed with Impress No Glue Mannies and Impress Press On False Eyelashes because I'm very into just easy right now and anyone can do it. You are going to love them just as much as I do. Both require zero glue, so there is no damage to your natural nails and lashes. There's also no annoying dry time. And the best part, zero mess. One step and you're done. 
The lash style options are endless, and there are so many on-trend nails to choose from. Impress, no glue manis, and press-on falsies are the easiest and fastest way to upgrade your look in just minutes. The press-on falsies have a unique under-lash application for a totally seamless look and are made with an exclusive self-stick technology that keeps them secure for up to 24 hours. The Impress Manis have a patented super hold adhesive for up to seven days secure hold. And that's perfect for all of you busy mamas out there who don't have a lot of time to spend on glam but want to look your best. I completely get it. Impress No Glue Manis and Impress No Glue Press on Falsies are absolutely a beauty must. You need to try them right now. So get yours today at impressbeauty.com slash lala. And use code LALA at checkout for 25% off Impress Manicure and Press-On Falsies. That's impressbeauty.com slash LALA and use code LALA at checkout for 25% off. If you don't care about Katie's business, why should she care about yours? I care tremendously about Katie's business. I have done nothing but support something about her since they came up with the idea. Again. These were things that she had spoken to production about and me. And we're filming a show. Something about her was conceived on Vanderpump Rules, finale season nine. These were the same types of conversations that Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz had to have about Schwartz and Sandys. So I felt like what she had said to production and myself and then decided last minute that she didn't want to do any of that because she was worried about her business. I didn't feel like anything she was saying would destroy the business. They were completely valid things that she was saying. It just doesn't, it didn't make sense to me. I could see if I said, you need to bring these things up because I want to fuck with your business. I want to burn it to the ground because she literally said that on the phone to me. If you're going to fuck with my business, I'm going to fuck with yours. And I did feel at that point in time that there was no business to speak of that she had. Mine was actually supporting my family, is supporting my family. I just didn't understand, like, why she couldn't have conversations that I've watched the Toms have many times, and they opened a very successful bar. And we're filming a TV show. I just didn't understand like how the game had changed. And Schwartzy has come for my business before. Everyone knows how that ends. I almost Teresa Judice the table on Tom Schwartz when he tried to clown on my business. That was on TV. Do you think you're a bad friend? I think I'm a friend. I don't think I'm a great friend. I don't think I'm a good friend. I think I'm a friend. Um, I'm 33 years old. I'm past the point of being in the sandbox saying, you're my best friend. I have a family. I'm always going to pick them over you. I can call you on the phone here and there, send you some text messages, let you know I'm proud of you. But if you're looking for someone to really be blindly loyal and show up and be a best friend, I'm not it. And I also don't expect that from my friends. My priorities are different. I have a baby. I got a mama. I got a brother. We all live together. Like, I have my pod. So... If you're going to be a friend who's needy and needs things from me that's going to take away from my pod, like, I'm not the friend for you. <laughs> so I have no problem saying that. I'm a friend. If you're looking for a great friend or a bad friend, I'm in the middle. I'm just the friend. <laughs> what is your biggest regret from this season? There is a change in your energy and approach. What happened? I think a lot of things happened. I think season 10, I came off um, very angry. And by the way, the only reason why it was validated was because Scandal happened. It was like, oh, well, sh it makes perfect sense. You know, had Scandal not happened, I was looked at that season as angry and bitter. This season, I'm acting the way everyone wanted me to act season 10. The problem is, is I was dealing with a lot of trauma season 10. Sand or Scandal happens and it's like, oh shit, the perfect storm. Everything I was saying, I was being vindicated on. When you have downtime and you come off of the high and you realize I, I'm in a custody battle still, 
I want more children and the plan was to have more children now and the plan was that the custody battle was going to be wrapped up and the plan was X, Y, and Z and you realize the plan has still not happened. So what do you do? You crawl into a hole, you continue to be angry, you continue to put your life on hold or you say, fuck it, I'm taking my life into my own hands and I'm going to be a grown-ass woman and I'm going to handle my shit with Ocean and handle this custody battle and remain hopeful as fuck. I'm going to heal my heart so that I can go out and have fun and laugh and be around straight men and date at some point. And I'm also going to bring another baby into the world. And you know what? We're going to create a beautiful environment and show my kids, my two little girls, that you can go through some real shit where you think you're going to be taken out and still find a way to live like a really, really meaningful, incredible life and not only have that, but do it all on camera with so many people judging the way that you choose to process, the way you choose to move through life. And by the way, this isn't just me. Ariana goes through it. Tom Sandoval, Sheena, we're all going through it. And even though we don't see eye to eye right now, like there's a bond between all of us because we all know what it's like to be brave enough to live this shit in real life, but on camera. It's such a wild ride. But I'm extremely proud of what I have done from the time I entered this show to where I am now. And I want my cast to be proud of where they are too. I'm glad the audience has opinions. I love that. That's why we get to make a show. And even though my cast and I may not be fucking with each other right now, that will never take away from the fact that I truly respect each and every one of them. Because this is not easy. My loves, <laughs> there was the um, non-yes man <laughs> asking all of the top questions that you guys had for season 11. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I know it was a wild ride, but I hope that you enjoyed this season. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for a summer off. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. And now I would truly like to put season 11 behind me and um, incubate this new baby girl that I have growing inside who is a fighter. I will say she's kicking and punching and she's doing well. And I'm just um, it's wild that it was such an intense season, but I am the happiest that I have ever been in my life and to experience those two things um at once and have them coexisting has been a trip so um I love you guys and I will catch you next week thank you so much for watching another episode of the give them lala podcast remember like comment and subscribe did I get all three I'm getting really good at that <laughs>